Hello, welcome to this teaser for correlated pseudorandomness from Expand Accumulate Codes by Alette Boyle, Geoffroy Couteau, Yves Gilboa, Yuval Ishai, Lisa Cole, myself, Nicholas Resch, and Peter Scholl. So this talk concerns multi-party computation when we have, say, two parties, Alice and Bob, each holding their own private inputs, but unfortunately they don't trust each other. However, together they would like to communicate back and forth such that they can compute the value of some function f applied to their private inputs, but they want to do this in such a way that nothing more is leaked about their private inputs. Okay, and for this talk I'd encourage you just to think of the case of two parties. So this work will fit into the MPC with preprocessing paradigm. So what is this? Basically, it's been known for many years that if Alice and Bob were given some pre-shared randomness, which satisfies some useful correlations, say from a trusted dealer, then we could obtain very fast, even information theoretically secure MPC protocols, basically by going gate by gate through a circuit describing the function they wish to compute and consuming the randomness as required. Um, however, unfortunately, um, the, the traditional methods for actually sharing this required pre-shared randomness are very inefficient. And this is actually the main bottleneck in these protocol designs. However, in the last six or seven years, a new idea has emerged where basically, instead of requiring full uh, pre-shared randomness, we try to compress it in such a way that maybe after uh, decompressing it, it's only pseudo-random, but then this compression of the required pseudo-randomness can be much more efficiently shared. So let's make this a bit more concrete. So firstly, uh, it was suggested to construct what are called pseudo-random correlation generators, where basically the idea is that Alice and Bob I uh, could use some sort of protocol to share very short Cs, SA and SB, and then silently with no more communication, they can expand them into longer strings. And these longer strings then will have many instances of the required uh, correlations that they can then use when running uh, their MPC protocol. Now, um, just as you know, we can go from pseudorandom generator to pseudorandom functions, we can also go to pseudorandom correlation functions. Here, basically, Alice and Bob will get two uh, keys, KA and KB, and then they can get uh, pointwise access to, say, an exponentially long string with a whole bunch of uh, correlated randomnesses, which they can use while running their protocol. Now, uh, notice that uh, the pseudorandom correlation generators, all the work is done in the offline phase, whereas in pseudorandom correlation functions, pretty much all the work is done in the online phase when they have to actually uh, obtain the uh, pre-shared randomnesses. So in this work, we suggest sort of a more equitable distribution of the work between the offline and the online phase, constructing what we uh, term offline online PCGs. So here, Alice and Bob will initially share what we call offline keys and then run some silent uh, offline uh, uh, algorithms, which expand uh, their short offline keys into some long strings Y and YB. And this can be done very efficiently, ideally more efficiently than what would be done for a PCG. But however, these strings Y and YB that they construct are not actually of the desired target correlation. However, when they do need some uh, some of the randomness from the desired target correlation, they can run a very fast online uh, algorithm. And these online algorithms only require about, you know, say looking up 10 coordinates from YA. And again, these online algorithms are done without any communication. So the online phase is also much faster than would typically be the case for a PCF. All right, in my remaining uh, brief amount of time, I'll try to give a brief hint as to how we could construct these things. So let's focus on what we call the Bole correlation, which essentially means that Alice and Bob have an additive secret sharing of a scalar vector product. And it's been known, it's known how to actually compress this, so long as the vector A here that Alice receives is guaranteed to be sparse. So we have some sort of black box, which spits out vectors A, C0, C1, and B, satisfying B times A equals C0 plus C1. And furthermore, A is guaranteed to be sparse. But aside from that, they look uh, uniformly random. They look as random as possible. Okay, so what could we do to try to convert this into a genuine Bole instance? Well, suppose that we have some linear map H and we apply it to all the vectors that we obtain. Notice that the outputs then will still satisfy the B times A equals C naught plus C1 correlation. And furthermore, assuming H is, you know, not too structured, doesn't have any weird behavior, it's reasonable to suspect that H times A will look uniformly random. And indeed, this is uh, exactly what the LPN assumption tells you if H is chosen uniformly at random. However, we can try to be a bit more aggressive. You know, we have some desires in terms of constructing these PCGs in terms of efficiency. How could we uh, add some, maybe some structure to H while still uh, making this whole thing work? So this is exactly what we do. We construct what we call expand accumulate codes, which have very nice desirable properties. So firstly, in the offline phase, we just need to basically compute a prefix sum of the vector which we have received which can be done uh, in parallel and in a very cache friendly manner. By prefix sum, I mean the prefix sum mod two. So this is a very fast operation. And then later when we need to go online, all we have to do is look up say 10 coordinates from the pre-computed vector, this accumulated vector, and then output their sum. 
So this is a very fast online operation with low locality. Furthermore, we give some security analysis to say that even if the sector uh, here is sparse, once we apply this matrix H to it, we have reason to suspect that it looks uniformly random to a computationally bounded adversary. Okay, that's all I have time to say. Um, of course, there's some more results in the paper. You can view the IACR ePrint if you like, or I uh, alternatively come see me at Crypto and I'd be happy to answer more questions. And of course, the longer talk will have more details. Thank you.